All right, hey guys, this is episode eight, if I recall correctly, and I'm just, shut up, God, how do I turn this guy down? There we go, um, that mouse, go away, there we go. And, uh, this is episode eight, and I'm just doing random free roaming stuff and talking about whatever, it's gonna be a pretty chill episode. Not like rigorous or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna sit here, chill, and talk and do drug busts and hate my life. Not really. I really enjoy my life and I enjoy doing this let's play, but like the drug bus, like, ugh. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna talk about games that I don't think get enough attention while I'm playing a game that gets a lot of attention, I'm sure. Uh,. These, are, these games are all going to be on the PC, just because for the last, like, three years, it's the only console I've been really playing. I own a Wii, and I own a 360, uh, and I play those sometimes. But, uh... I don't I just like the PC better, and, uh... Like, its fidelity has been increasing lately, like... It, uh, when I got a 360, it was vastly more powerful than my computer. So, oh, I was to turn. Um, so of course I uh, played the 360 more because it looked better. Um, but uh, as you know, computers have advanced and the 360's hardware has remained the same. I just like started to go PC more, and uh, God, what the fuck? Get off! No, off! God, it's like a dog. <laughs> You think they are so important you get them? I don't want to spend the 25 years in the jail. Yeah, because uh guns are illegal in Hong Kong. I should have to fight with only fists. What are you guys complaining about? Um Yeah, but games that I think don't get enough attention. Oh god, I dodged that. What the fuck? There we go. Um One of them is uh is is Dwarf Fortress, uh, and you get you guys might have heard of that. Uh, it's like semi-common. Oh wow, that's it. Oh, he took away my knife. What a dick. Where'd my knife go? Oh, no, it's here again. Um. Dwarf Fortress is a road a roguelike, which is a terrifying word for some people to hear. What it basically means is that, well, as you see in Sleeping Dogs, uh, it's basically a bunch of polygons uh, arranged in things that look like people, and these polygons can move around and uh, interact with each other uh, because of rules that the uh, that the game engine sets. For instance, when my fist meets their face, it makes like a POW sound and it decreases their life bar. Um, and, uh, that, so, you know, um, that doesn't really allow for as many complex interactions because a lot of your computer's power is spent, um, rendering, uh, all these different polygons and the ways they interact with each other. Oh, he, I can't grapple with that guy. Um, yeah, so a lot of your, uh, a lot of a, uh, gaming, uh, rigs rendering power is spent, uh, making all these polygons and all these shaders that put effects on the polygons, um, and that, uh, and that kind of limits the gameplay. Like, I I'm pretty sure if I knife them anywhere, it'll count as the same basic amount of damage. And if I do a strong attack with the knife, it counts as a little bit more, but the same amount of damage each time. It doesn't, like, render if I hit them on their stomach, or if I hit them, like, on their side, or on their arm, or on their leg. It I'm pretty sure it doesn't render that, like some, like, FPSs do. But, um, but it's a limitation that games have. 
uh, because there's limited computing power. Um, uh, so there's, there's only so much complexity they can display without having a game look like complete ass. Um, but that's what roguelikes do. They make the game look like complete ass in exchange for having huge complexity. Uh, so Dwarf Fortress, um, like, what do I say? Five, three, no, yes, yes, and then zero. Wait, no. God. Um, this one five, this one three, no. This one's zero, this one five, shit. Okay, that one's, that one's definitely five, so this one has to be three. And then that one has to be five. But, wait, what? Oh, okay. So that one has to be six, and then this one has to be five. No. Three? Zero. Okay, zero there. Oh, I was right, okay. Um And uh So so what Dwarf Fortress does is it like emulates every body part any creature or person might have, and like if they get attacked with a knife, it'll like calculate how much damage would be done because they hit them in the arm, like their skin resistance, their bone resistance and stuff like that, how much blood they'd lose. Uh, and it makes the combat really like, quote unquote, realistic. I mean, it, it's kind of hilarious and over the top at times, but uh, like more realistic than um. Okay, a pop star. Where this drug was. Um. Uh, but it allows for like a lot more detailed combat than a game like this would. Uh, but. You know, that takes up a lot of computing power, so the exchange they do is all of their... Oh, that's a weird glitch. Um, all of their graphics are done in ASCII, which is text characters. And it involves a lot of reading, and... Oh? Why did it direct me here, then? The hell? Oh, now I have to walk all the way back to... Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm just gonna take a cab, probably. So that's a little expensive right now, but I really don't care. I really don't care. Okay, cab. Cab, come at me, bro. Cab. Cab, cab, cab. There should be way more of them. Um, and I know having to read your game is kind of a turnoff for some people, but the complexity the game allows for, uh, it, totally worth it. Hey, stop. Freeze. Freeze. This is the police. Give me a, give me a ride. Okay. Um... Drop me off at parking lot, whatever, yes. Um, like, uh, the only mode I play in it, uh, which is only a small part of the game, like, there's so many modes, there's adventure mode, there's, uh, it's like a city builder mode, uh, but the mode I play is kind of like, you know how you were in a kid, you were, when, when you were a kid, and you... Huh? Get away from her. You think it would give me some peace and quiet? He's a nice guy. You just need to figure out how to make him ask you. Uh, I missed the beginning of that. Um. Uh. So you know you're in a kid, and you had like, you found like a spider, and I don't know a snake in your backyard. This is pretty big examples, but, and like, some people like put them in a cardboard box and watch them fight to the death. Well, some kids do. This is a little barbaric, but whatever. Um. That's essentially what you can do, except on a huger scale. Like, uh, there's, like, hundreds of races evolved in, uh, involved in the arena mode, and you can pit, like, a dragon versus, like, I don't know, 15 gorillas. Or, you know, an army of bears or something, and you see who wins, and the battles are, like, exact, and, like, the dragon, like, breathes fire and melts the hind limbs. Of, of the bear, so he has to like drag himself around by his front claws. It's like totally graphic, but it's really interesting and it's free. Um, there's a bunch of other game modes, uh, but they're a little too complex for me. I'm a simple man. Actually, it's just a lot of work to learn to play them, I think. Um, uh, another game that I think is not paid near enough attention. Hold on, I'm gonna get this first. Just wait for the shield to appear. Okay, alright, guys. I'm gonna lift my finger off the right stick. Okay, it's going on to the A button. 
pressing it down, lifting it up, moving it back to the right stick. Alright, you, you guys can watch that over, uh, if you need to. I'll, I'll, I'll put an annotation up, so, so you can watch that again. I know I moved a little fast there. Uh, right. Another game that didn't get near enough attention, uh, was World of Goo. It was popular, like, a while back. Uh, two years ago, I think it was made. Um... But, uh, it didn't get near enough attention, and what it did was, oh. What? You slut! You've disgraced to our family! We love each other. This isn't about sex. Yes, it is. I know what you two are up to. All those lubricants and toys. You can't keep secrets from me. You've been spying on me? Now I'm definitely leaving. <laughs> um, what World of Goo did was they took a really really complex uh, subject matter, which is like building towers and building stuff and uh, like friction and how buildings interact with each other and it simplified it down to uh, these little blobs of goo and um, a simple objective, you know, like bridge over here or uh, or like build a tower to this height and keep <clears throat> and keep these uh this amount of goo able to escape escape uh and um games that can like simply do uh oh, I'll go to this one um games that can simply do a complex thing are few and far between uh and ones that do it in like a fun manner um are are really Noteworthy and World of Goo is pretty unique uh, in that manner. I got it in the Humble Indie Bundle, which always contains great games. Oh. Um, but uh, if you're looking for like a building game like that, but with more complexity, another thing that's hugely unknown, I, I might do an LP of it, though I'm leaning towards a no, is it's called Bridget. Like, B R I D G E. Dash it, I think. Um, it. it. It is spelled it. Um, uh, that one's a lot more complex and a lot more difficult. Like you have to deal with like different structure types, like uh, steel, and, like corrugated steel and iron, uh, and suspension bridges and stuff like that. Just like a lot of the physics on how bridges work. Uh, but that one's fun too, and it's really fun to fail. I think it only works on NVIDIA cards, but uh, that's, that's the more in-depth version of a, of a building game. Oh, let's see, more games that I think are woefully underplayed. Maybe not underplayed, but this game was fantastic. It was called The World Ends With You. It's a, it's a DS game. Um, it's a JRPG, which means that uh, it's more linear. The, the stories based on the characters and not just stuff happening. Oh crap. Wait, what the hell's down? I'm gonna go through the floor? What the hell? Oh, there's probably stairs down. Yeah, there's stairs. Okay. Ooh, there's probably a lockbox here. Hey guys, what's going on? Just gonna rob you. <gasps> Oh, he has a cell phone out. What a dick. Uh, the world ends with you. JRPG. Um, really great characters. And, um, it has a pretty... Oh, come on! I want to swim with the fishies. Uh, and, um, it has a story that's pretty, like out there but um uh but it, it like reveals itself slowly in a way that makes sense and it's one of those games that it feels like oh it's gonna end here soon well that was okay that was enjoyable enough and then like that's the halfway point for the game it's like wow it, it gets more in depth and it gets more intense the enemies get harder i didn't expect it to go that far and then like uh, you just get a real uh sense of uh, like, building, I think? Like, like, the, 
all the elements build on each other and like at some of the later bosses you really feel accomplished when you beat them and there's like attachment with the characters and like you recognize all the bosses it's not just like a big ugly tentacle guy that you have to beat the shit out of no no, no. it's like oh it's that one guy that did all this stuff to me oh man that guy's a jerk i want to beat the crap out of him i'm gonna enjoy this boss fight uh and there it has its fill of like guys with poofy hair and, like weird girls and it's kind of teenagerish but um I, I definitely recommend it. It's a, it's on the DS. Uh, emulators run it well because it's just 2D. Um, that said, you have to use the uh, you have to use it does this weird thing where you fight on both screens. Like you have to use the control pad and the stylus to fight the enemies. Why do you have a drug pen here? People just swim to get drugs. People do people have to own sh a ship to get down here? What the fuck? Oh, I think this is. I think this is the first gunfight. Is this the first gunfight? Yep, oh god. Uh, I don't have a running disarm yet, I don't think. Oh god, yep. Yeah, you have, you have to get a lot more moves before you can, um, before you can take out gun foes. Gunned? Gunned foes? Gun wielding foes? What am I talking about? Well, that's embarrassing. I died. That's okay. Uh, yeah, they, uh, I think that's the only place where they have guns. That little swimming area. And why was I spawned here? Huh. Um, that's probably another, yeah, sewer place. Uh, how am I doing on time? Uh, I got, I got a bit left. Um, What do I want to do for the last like ten minutes of this one? Cause I don't have the uh, I don't have the little, don't have the little uh, what do you call them? I don't have the little thing. The um, I think it's the shrines that get marked. Either that or lock boxes. Cause I need more face to do that. So I'd like to raise face, but I don't see anywhere to do that. Oh, these- you get a little face from these. Okay, I'll take a, uh, cab up there. Hey, freeze. 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 No. My cab. Stop. Red light. Red light. Red light. Stop. 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 <sighs> okay. Well, you know, I could- I could- I could walk there. It's only, like, a kilometer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Stop, 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 stop. Do not turn left. Yes. Alright. Um. Nearest thing there is the parking garage. No. Yes. Huh. Alright. Okay, let's see. One more game that's woefully underplayed that you guys should try. Hmm. I'm trying to think the best one to recommend. Move, move, move. Oh, I know one. Alright, um. So, one of the reasons I like roguelikes, like Dwarf Fortress. Okay. Oh! Alright, problem solved. Problem solved. Um. One of the reasons I like roguelikes is they use a thing called procedural generation. It takes a random timestamp from your computer and it uses that to like make a landscape or make a character or uh, make a quest. So so it's never the same every time you play it because the timestamp is going to be different. It takes it down to like the millisecond or something like that to make the seed. Um, and uh and so that seed is just taken from um is just taken as i said from like using a very specific time but that's only one of the uh one of the possible ways to generate a seed and uh 
It's the only way that's truly random, I think. Crap. Um, God. It's the only way that's truly random. But, uh, there's a bunch others, uh, bu a bunch of others that would, um, that make it so, um, it's different every time, but not random. Uh, I mean, t technically every game uses that. Uh, like this game uses user input, um, to make the, uh, to make the experience different every time. Um, and the game I'm talking about, Audio Surf, uh, uses your own music track to make the experience different. So like, uh, the kinds of music you listen to, it, uh, it changes the, uh, the layout of the game. It changes, uh, like kind of a roller coaster e type thing that you, uh, uh, that, that you do for the, like the whole game is just like riding along and collecting little token things on this track that's kind of like a roller coaster. Um, and it's challenging enough, but it, 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 it'd be completely, crap, it'd be completely boring if it weren't for the music aspect of it, but the music aspect where, like, if the music gets louder or more intense, or, uh, or the key signature changes, then the game recognizes that and it'll adjust the track. Uh, and that makes it so interesting, like, if I play a metal song, god, will you stop grabbing me? God. So obnoxious. I mean, I'm just gonna kill this guy so he stops that. Um, when I play a metal track, it'll be like a lot more challenging, and it'll be mostly downhill compared to if I played like a classical song or something like that. Uh, and I just like the idea of like completely controlling your gameplay experience by listening to uh, Beethoven or listening to Slayer. Uh, and just you know makes it more interactive makes it more interesting and you feel like you really feel like wow this is my own even though probably hundreds of people listen to that song or if not thousands or tens of thousands or millions um but like at that moment you're like wow i bet no one else is at this point in the song in this game and i just like that feeling of uh of not solidarity solitude yeah i like that feeling of just like this is completely mine and no one else's now, where's the camera? It's a street light. Ca camera. Okay. The cord goes. Oh, that was easy. Alright, I want face level 3. I think that's when the uh, unlockables are. So I'm gonna have to do one more drug bust before I can just start cruising around. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, five, six. Oh, okay. That was easy. And is my house near here? It's all the way over there. Man, doing these is so slow. Now that I think Central is the one where you is the place where you get your next house at, and that happens pretty soon in the story. So I'm looking forward to that because it'd make these so much faster. So much faster. What the hell? Why is it going up? What? Everybody I know has a place in Central these days. Yeah, like that guy. Like that guy was saying, everyone I know has a place in Central these days. It's gonna be me soon. I don't get this. Just, just give me a road. I want a car or a taxi or something. I'm gonna have to cut the mission soon. Like, th this walk back is literally killing me. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna do this drug bust, then I'm gonna cut the mission, and do both of the busts at the house at the same time. Come on, come on, swing. I know you want to. Swing, 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 bada bada. There you go. And you'd think, like, way personally going to these places and beating up all these thugs would, like, raise concerns in the triad 
Because they're already looking at him suspiciously, as you saw in the story missions. Stop on your ass. Okay. <laughs> Glitches are sometimes funny in this game. That guy's a cleaver. What the fuck? Oh crap. Oh god. <laughs> what? I was pressing what? what do you want from me? I was pressing Y. Oh crap. God, I hate this guy. Just keeps grappling me. There we go. I'm pretty close to regenerating health, so it's all good. It's all good in the hood. God, get off of me! There we go. There we go. Yep. And then. I think some thugs are just randomly attracted whenever I try to take out drug places. Yeah, like that guy, he just wanders in. So it makes it hard to figure out the thug I have to beat that was here originally. Um, so the, the rest of these guys will just run away. There we go, it was that guy. And my face goes up! Nice! Love when my face goes up. Oh, it's not! It's not the upgrade, it's the disarm. Okay. Well, whatever, that works. So, when we, when you guys join me next time, we're gonna be hacking this camera. And then, probably some story. Pretty sick of free roaming already. Gotta get some story in me before I can get ready to do the same thing 27 more times. Right?